Now, von Willebrand disease is subdivided into three main subtypes, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 1 and type 3, they are quantitative deficiency, quantitative defect, quantity-wise, amount-wise defect. Type 1 is a partial quantitative defect of von Willebrand factor, and type 3 is a complete or near complete severe deficiency of von Willebrand factor. But type 1 and 3 both are quantitative defect. But type 2 is different. Type 2 is a qualitative defect of the von Willebrand factor. This is a very fundamental thing you need to understand. Now, the, the mode of inheritance pattern of this disorder, which is considered the most common breeding disorder worldwide, is actually varies from its subtype to subtype. Type 1, which is a partial quantitative deficiency of von Willebrand factor, they are typically inherited in autosomal dominant fashion. Type 1 is autosomal dominant. But the type 3, which I've given as a case today, that is the most severe subtype and their inheritance pattern is autosomal recessive. And type 2 can be both autosomal dominant and recessive. Type 2 uh, is not a single subtype. They have subtypes also I discussed earlier. Type 2 can be type 2A, type 2B, type M, type N. And they can be autosomal dominant or recessive. So the basic headline is this that there are three subtypes, type 1, type 2, type 3 of von Willebrand disease, type 1 and type 3, they are quantitative defect, amount-wise deficiency is there. Type 1 is a partial quantitative defect, type 3 is a complete quantitative deficiency or near complete, severe, severe deficiency. Type 1 is autosomal dominant inheritance pattern, type 3 is autosomal recessive inheritance pattern and type 2, which is a qualitative defect, can be both autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. These are some fundamental concepts. Now I've come to the type 3, which is the most severe subtype of the von Willebrand disease. Most common subtype is type 1, around 75%. Type 3 is the most severe and it is a complete quantitative defect or deficiency as I mentioned. So what would happen here that this is an interesting aspect that this can also uh, resemble somehow like hemophilia, hemophilia A, the type 3. Why? Because we know that von Willebrand factor whose complete quantitative deficiency or severe deficiency is seen in type 3 von Willebrand disease, they play uh, an important role in both primary hemostasis and the secondary hemostasis to stop the bleeding. In primary hemostasis, they play a very, very important role. We know that they bind with the glycoprotein 1B receptor in the first step of the platelet plug formation, the first step to initiate the platelet plug formation, that is the platelet adhesion. And in that step, what happened? Von Willebrand factor binds with glycoprotein 1B receptor with the platelet. And that initiates the whole thing, the primary platelet plug formation. So von Willebrand factor, if it is not there, primary hemostasis cannot be initiated. It is a very, very important uh, point there. Now, von Willebrand factor also plays an important role in the secondary hemostasis, in the coagulation pathway. How? Because it stabilizes or prolongs the half-life. It carries the factor 8. Factor 8 typically remains bound to von Willebrand factor and when it is bound to von Willebrand factor its half-life is typically prolonged around 12.4 12.5 hours but when it is not it is unbound it is not bound with von Willebrand factor its half-life is 2.4 hours so it's quite less so in case in those cases like type 3 von Willebrand disease where we don't have von Willebrand factor at all or very low level what would happen? It would also cause quick degradation of the factor 8, coagulation factor. Because factor 8, when it is bound with von uh, factor, as I mentioned, its half life prolongs. It stabilizes the von factor, stabilizes the von uh, factor. It's like a mentor for the, for the, I think in that way actually, that von uh, factor is a kind of mentor and the mentee is factor 8, which helps to guide, to navigate through the world in this big bad world. So in case what is happening when you have von Willebrand type 3 von Willebrand disease where is a severe or quantitative deficiency, there will be not only the severe low level of von Willebrand factor, but also there will be low level of factor 8. And as a result, it can resemble clinically hemophilia A. So you know that hemophilia, hemophilia A typically presents with, which is due to inherited factor 8 deficiency, present with joint bleeding and muscle bleeding, intermuscular bleeding. So in a patient of von Willebrand disease, we not only get mucocutaneous bleeding, which is usually seen in von Willebrand disease. Mucocutaneous bleeding means mucous membrane bleeding and skin bleeding. There could be paraprofic spot, uh, there could be gum bleeding, mucocutaneous bleeding, there could be nasal bleeding, epistaxis could be there. Plus there would be joint bleeding, 
bleeding inside the into the joints and muscle bleeding also like hemophilia why because we know that von neumann factor is low and it is in, indirectly causing low level of factor 8 also and we know that factor 8 plays an important role in the particular in the intrinsic coagulation pathway because the intrinsic coagulation pathway as you remember 12 11 then 9 and along with 8 they they activate the factor 10 5 2 1 there's a final compound pathway so so that's why in this condition you can also get prolonged aptt uh, you get prolonged aptt activated partial thermoplastic in time because activated partial thermoplastic in time is actually measure the intrinsic coagulation pathway and intrinsic coagulation pathway is also hampered in type 3 monument disease so that that could impact the the aptt could be prolonged also so the point the three key points quickly as i mentioned in type 3 von neumann disease type 3 von neumann disease is the most severe form of the von neumann disease it is characterized by complete quantity deficiency of the von neumann factor and it usually presents with not only the usual form of von neumann disease that is a mucocutaneous bleeding but also it presents with features which are similar to hemophilia a there will be bleeding inside the joint there could be bleeding inside the muscle and here what would happen that not only the von neumann factor would be completely or near complete deficiency but it would also indirectly impact the factor 8 level because as i mentioned von neumann factor normally stabilizes and prolongs the half life of factor 8 so when von neumann factor is not there it's very very low it will also indirectly cause low level of coagulation factor 8 so that's these are the three things or four things you need to keep in mind about the type 3 von neumann disease thank you so much